This FizCast explores the mathematics of simple harmonic motion. We're given the following function x, which describes the simple harmonic motion of a body as a function of time. At a particular time, we're asked to calculate the displacement, velocity, and acceleration of the motion. The second part of the question, we're asked to describe the frequency and the period of the motion. These two things should be independent of the time that we're given. Firstly, I can interpret this by understanding its simple harmonic motion. That means that my object will be described by a function of the form its position, x, is given by its amplitude, a, times the cosine of its angular frequency, omega times t, plus some phase constant theta. And so what I can do is look at the expression here and look at the equation and I can see a few things straight away. I know that my amplitude is equal to 6.0 meters. I know that omega is my angular frequency, which is going to be given by 3 times pi. And I know that my phase constant phi is equal to pi over 3. Really, this is just a straightforward substitution of the time t equals 2 seconds into my equation and then evaluating uh, the right hand side of the equation. So I think we can jump straight to the evaluation process for part A. The displacement um, is going to be given by x at 2.0 seconds. So on the right hand side of the equation it looks like 6.0 times the cosine and my cosine function is 3 times pi times 2, that's my time, plus pi over 3. Now you could jump to a calculator and if you do that be sure to have your calculator in radians when you're evaluating your cosine function, it's very important. If you don't have a calculator, well then you can just think a little bit and realize that what's inside the square brackets is really an angle. This looks like 3 pi times 2, so 6 pi plus pi over 3. That angle in brackets there is really 19 pi over 3. So we've gone around more than once. In fact, we've gone around 3 times from the 3 times 2 pi. And then we've gone a little bit more, um, which is pi over 3. And so if we know that there is 180 degrees is the pi, so 180 divided by 3 is 60 degrees. So 60 degrees is equal to my pi over 3. And that 60 30 triangle is actually helpful. So I know that side is 2, that side is root 3, and that side is 1. So I don't need my calculator to necessarily evaluate the cosine. Of 60 degrees with the cosine of pi on 3 because the cosine is adjacent to divided by hypotenuse. The cosine of pi over 3 is equal to 1 half. That's also equal to the cosine of 19 pi over 3 or the cosine of 3 pi times 2 plus pi on 3. So my displacement is 6 times a half which is 3 meters. Part B, to find my velocity, what I will use is my velocity is my derivative of x with respect to time. So that means I need to take the derivative of this expression here before I put the numerical value for t in, and then I evaluate it. So the velocity will be minus 3 pi times 6 times the sine of 3 pi times t plus pi over 3. And if I want to evaluate that, then I just need to evaluate that t is equal to 2 seconds. So we'll replace that t with 2. Now we have minus 3 pi times 6 times the sine. Once again, this is still 19 pi over 3, or the sine of pi over 3. I can go to my 60-30 triangle. The sine of 60 degrees, sine, is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. So it will be equal to root 3 over 2. So we've got minus 3 pi times 6 times root 3 over 2. And I can evaluate that as minus 49 meters per second. To get my acceleration, I can take the second derivative 
of my displacement or I can differentiate my velocity or we'll find that's given by minus omega squared a cosine of omega t plus phi if I use the generic expression substituting for my omega and my a I end up with minus 3 pi all squared times 6 times the cosine of 19 pi on 3 which is that half again and so we have minus 266 meters per second squared as my numerical number for my acceleration. For the frequency of the motion I need to recall that frequency is related to angular frequency by a factor of 2 pi. Omega is equal to 2 pi times frequency, so frequency is omega divided by 2 pi. We know that omega is 3 times pi dividing by 2 pi. The pi's cancel and we get 1.5 hertz is my frequency. The period of my motion is given by the reciprocal of my frequency. It's the time for one cycle, so it's going to be given by uh, 2 thirds which is 0 0.666 seconds. So what I'd like to do is just a little bit of assessment to see if that makes sense by plotting out that function. So give myself a bit more room. So what I want to do is plot out the function x of t is equal to 6 times the cosine of 3 pi t plus pi over 3 to see if this makes sense. So the way I'm going to do this is first of all to note the period. So the period is equal to 0.666 seconds. So that means that this is the time that my cycle repeats. So if I put 0.66 here, the next one is going to be 1.32, and then it's going to repeat at 1.98, which is pretty much my two seconds. So, so the waveform that I draw in here is going to be the same as the waveform in here is the same as the waveform in here. Next up, what I want to do is evaluate my function at t equals 0. So at t equals 0, I end up with 6 times the cosine of pi over 3. Now we know that cosine of pi over 3 is a half, so that's equal to 3 meters. So in fact, the displacement at t equals 0 is the same as the displacement at 2 seconds, and since this it repeats itself, it's also the same as the displacement at 0.66 and 1.32. Now the maximum amplitude is 6 meters, so my waveform should oscillate between plus 6 and minus 6. So the only question to ask now is, is my wave going to be increasing as I go to the right, or is it going to be decreasing? So what I want to do for that is to ask myself well, what time is my amplitude maximum? And so what I can do here is look at the argument of the cosine and realize that for my cosine to be a maximum, for it to be my cosine to be plus one, then what's inside the brackets here must be zero. So what time does that occur? So we can say that three pi times t plus pi over three is equal to zero and just solve for my time. So my time will end up being minus pi over 3, taking that across the right hand side, then dividing by 3 pi, so multiplying by 1 over 3 pi. The pi's cancel, and I end up with minus 1 ninth of a second. So at minus 1 ninth of a second, which is to the left, that is when my amplitude is maximum. So now that I've got that point, I have to realize that um, from the period of the function, It'll be a maximum just before um, when its amplitude is 3. It's always moving down in that direction. And because I know it's going to be cosinusoidal, then it must go down and up and down and up, repeating and down and up. And this is, of course, a sketch, but you get the picture. I wanted to use this to assess my problem, so what I want to do is look at here and say, well, what's the sign of my velocity? My velocity is negative because my slope is negative. What's the sign of my acceleration? 
my acceleration is also negative because my object is being accelerated towards the equilibrium position from above. So that restoring force is pulling me in a negative direction, so therefore my acceleration is negative. That makes sense because here my velocity is negative and my acceleration is negative. So this just gives me a check of the signs of my uh, velocities and accelerations.